Here we have the 2012 Twin Air in white. Airbag, passenger airbag, knee airbag, driver's airbag, all knee replacing. Obviously that means the dash has to be replaced as well, because the passenger airbag does that. And smashes the windscreen, which is always good. So, I'm going to start taking off everything that needs to be taken off. To start with, I'm taking off, I've already undone one screw, then I remembered I was going to record. So, all these screws underneath here, there's one at the back there, underneath that flap. This tray has to come off, well literally everything has to come off. The only thing you don't really need to take off is the gear stick, everything else has to come off. Uh, and I should do it bit by bit. It will slow me down, but I'll do it bit by bit and film what I can. Right, sitting in the driver's seat now. This has to come on to get to get this off. Stereo has to come out. Obviously, you have to prise out the little buttons to take the stereo out, uh, and you need to get the heater panel off. If that's never come off before, it can be quite stiff. But if you get um, these types of tools, these have seen better days. These ones, uh, these types of tools which obviously hard plastic, it won't break anything and it's, it is a matter of brute force to get those off but we'll come back to that in a minute um, first thing I've got to do is get this off I've undone the screws along there uh, got to get this off, get the stereo out next then take this off uh, there's a couple of screws here and there steering wheel needs to come off, obviously the airbag's gone under this rubber knob here which I can't get off one handed um, is the bolt the speedo needs to come out the top and bottom cowlings need to come off which are quite awkward, the screws are in awkward places and it takes a lot longer to get them back on than it does to get them off. Um, centre console needs to come off, we've got two bolts underneath there, we've got a bolt underneath there and then two bolts or one bolt whatever it is under there, that all then lifts off, um, bottom piece comes off, kick panel comes off down there, um, push out the uh, buttons for the electric windows both sides this all then comes off the gate can lift away you don't have to take the gear knob off um, underneath there when we get to it you'll see the clock spring that has come off otherwise you can't get the um, the dash to pull out and then you've got a bolt up there and up there you can't see them from here but there's there's two large bolts up there uh, and then there's several bolts uh, there's one under there they're all over the place but when I get to them I'll show you, then the thing just lifts out, as if by magic. So we'll come back in a minute when I've got that off. There's the heater panel off. I always have, you should ideally take that connect, electrical connection off there. I always have trouble getting that off. There's no room to pull it out, it's a nightmare. So I always leave it on, um, leave it dangling. It gets in the way a bit, but sometimes you can disconnect it down here. Uh, once you've got all this lot off, but it's a pain. Uh, just to look at this, you've got, that's, there's your bulbs one two bulbs there for your the illumination of your heater panel and that one there you can see it is the uh, the one that activates when the air conditioning is switched on right that's so that now that's off we've got a screw there screw there they've got to come out uh, and then uh, then we can drop it down uh, when we can pull off the um the panel oh we've got to take the stereo out as well one thing i forgot to mention was it's easier if you take this uh, the, the colored panel off first it's a lot easier to get your hands behind the stereo when you uh, do it, otherwise um, it's difficult to get the stereo out. So there were two two extra screws under there which I had to take off and then the white panel just pulls out. So when, you, when you're releasing the, the catches on the stereo, you can literally get your fingers behind there. I know that's not pushed all the way back in now, but you can get your fingers behind there on both sides and pull on it. It gives you much more leverage than it does by trying to pull those if you pull those out they just come straight out so you have to push them to the side and I know previously on a stereo I actually broke the inside tabs on the stereo which was very annoying so stereo comes out and then we'll carry on there you go stereos out uh, if your uh, new dashboard already has uh, the lubes uh, on it you obviously don't need to take those out you can leave those um, there's a bolt down there that has to come out You've got two bolts just there with a little locating tab which just pushes out. Uh, there's another two bolts down here underneath these switches um, and that, that will just release the heater panel. The Pe heater panel doesn't need to come out, it just needs to be released from the, um, from the dash. Okay, that bolt's out. And now just to get, the, um, get to the behind here, it just 
we just unclip that, that just pulls out. It's difficult doing it one handed. Just be careful with it because it's got like plastic tabs on it, so you don't want to break it. Just need to swap hands. Trying to do it one handed is not good. So I think I'm going to put the camera down. So I'm going to end up breaking it. So once that comes off, we'll come back. Okay, managed to get that off. One side, two hands. So to release this this part, you've got a screw there, one the other side, small screw the other side. Uh, you've got that one centre one, which is all part of this. So this piece needs to come off. But before we can get any of this off, we need to take this front tray out. So as I say, underneath, you need to get a screwdriver in there to prise that out. Oh. Preferably without damaging it. Again, this is not something to do one-handed. Try again. There you go. Once, once that's out, get that out of the way. You see, you've got two bolts there. Same goes for the rear one. And as I said earlier, you've got a bolt underneath that little cover there as well. So once you've got those out, you then have to disconnect um, the USB thing and the um, accessory socket, and um, and then it will just lift out. Right, we're back around the passenger side now. So what I've done, so I've undone those bolts, they're all undone, so that's sort of, the back one's out, uh, middle bolt, there's all bits of chewing gum around the bolt, which is lovely. I just think this is quite dirty, so it'll be, once it's out, it'll be easy to give it a good clean as well. So down here, we've got one bolt which holds on that panel, one screw that holds on that panel. Uh, once that's undone, then we've got screws down here. Uh, let's undo that, let me show you. I know it's only a bolt. But rather than uh, just tell you, I'll show you. So once that one comes undone, which was reasonably easy. Uh, when you've not done this before, it's good to have little polythene bags and put your um, put your screws in so you know which screw goes where. So once that comes off, a bit of brute force. As you can see, there's another screw there. Uh, which holds on the centre console onto the top bit, uh, and then there's a similar affair around the other side. So we'll come back around to the other side in a minute. So when we get to this side, you've got uh, again the kick panel here, but this is a, a large kick panel. So you've got a bolt just there, another one in that hole, and then that little one there, and then that piece will come off. And then same applies. Uh, there's a screw up there which holds that this piece onto this piece. And then once that's undone, the uh, middle, the front section, the centre console will come out. There you go, that kick panel's off. Hiding behind there, that little bit of sponge there, you'll see, you might just better see the blue and the green of the plug. That's the uh, airbag ECU, which is much more accessible from the other side, but that's one of the last things that we do. So we'll come back to that. Again, there's that screw there. Once I release that screw, uh, that centre console will be able to pivot out. And then again, the wires aren't very long on the electrical connections there, um, so you have to be careful that you don't break that. I have broken it once in the past, um, yeah, it's best if you, uh, if you don't, because it can be quite expensive. So uh, we'll get that off and then we'll come to the uh, to this piece. I did exactly what I just said don't do, I broke it, but I managed to push it back together. Uh, this one's actually changed, but last time I did this it didn't have one of these little um, modern multi-plugs, it was just one of the plugs that was a nightmare to get out. The, the accessory lighter, it's just a bog standard push-in thing with a little clip, like a lot of them are. Now this one is a bit more like the uh, sort of the airbag type thing, where you've got a little little clip that you push down, and then the blue bit that folds up. But because the wire was so short, I couldn't get to it, so this all sort of came apart. Um, but it, luckily, I managed to get it back together, so I haven't done any damage, thankfully. So that's that off. So now. We need to do the same with the bolts at the top, get those bolts undone, and then we can take the bottom piece off as well. There's also a bolt down there somewhere, I think, that holds it on. No, we've already, un we've already undone those, so both sides that's undone there. So we just need to get those bolts undone there, and then that will lift off as well. Right, when you get that bit off, which is a bit tricky, you have to put it into uh, reverse gear to get that one out, and then second gear to get that one out, and you get a screwdriver on it. Uh, quite awkward, quite awkward and then you have to prise it off, it's held in in various places um, just there, just there, and same around the other side uh, get, again, use one of these um, to prise it off uh, there is a chance you'll break it, I haven't broken one yet but it comes close, they are quite tough um, 
Right, the last one's on the centre console bit, then I'll one there, and that one there. Once those are off, this will then um, disconnect. So we can take that away, and then the next thing to do will be to fix off getting that tray out. We undone some of the screws here when we took the front, the white panel off, uh, but that tray needs to come out as well. Uh, and there's numerous screws and bolts on that to get get at that. So we'll come back to that one in a minute. Forgot to mention, uh, when you've taken that um, centre console off, you need to get the window wiper, either get the whole plug out like I've done on that one, or take the top off like I've done on that one, because as you can see in there, you may be able to see, there's a couple of bolts in there which release the bottom of the heater panel, and obviously the dash lifts away from that. So I released the, on that one I released the plug, and on that one I took the whole thing out. It's just because I couldn't get that piece out, it was really tough, I didn't want to break it. So I just took the front of it off, which they is fine, they just clip back on. As long as you don't damage this piece, it's alright. I just thought I'd mention that. So coming down to the parcel tray, or whatever you like to call it, not the parcel tray, the, the poor excuse for a glove box. Uh, as you can see there, there's a, a long bolt in there that needs to come out. Um, I haven't done one of these for a while and it's uh, I'm forgetting. I've already taken these ones out underneath. Um, I think there's one just here. And then underneath the flap where the little hidden pocket for documents, uh, I believe there's a couple in there as well. Um, so there's a few. And if, you, if you forget one, which I have done in the past because I couldn't find it, um, you end up breaking this. Which isn't the end of the world because it's just like one screw. So it doesn't really affect you holding it in, but obviously if you can avoid breaking any screws, so much better. So I've got to just go around it, make sure I've got all the screws out, and then it should just pull out. That was the little one there that I've forgotten about in the past. So you can see that's come out now. Because I forgot that one in the past, that's when I broke it. But uh, luckily I had my little trusty little torch up there and I could see what was going on. So that's what that looks like under there. There's your fuse box, which is your, is that your body computer as well? I know that's the part that you need that um, if you change your uh, ignition barrel and you're changing keys as well as the computer under the bonnet, you need that one as well. Which I tried to take off of the car that I broke up and I couldn't figure out how it comes off. I'm sure it's easy but I just couldn't get couldn't figure it out but we won't worry about that on this because I'm not doing it so um, there you go so that there is your brake switch when you press the brake pedal that little micro switch pushes that lever which makes your brake lights come on which do get stuck so if you ever get your brake light staying on that's probably your culprit you can take it out with a twist uh, get a pair of pliers on the end and pull it out and it resets it um, Especially in these crash damaged cars, if someone's put their foot on the pedal really, really heavy, chances are that's what it's that's what's caused it. Um, as I say, you can reset them, or you can buy second-hand ones on eBay for a tenner, which work fine, which I've done in the past. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here to do the dash, so let's get on. All right, back in the uh, driver's seat again. So everything else is now taken off. Um, I haven't done any of the bolt, undone any of the bolts on the actual dash itself yet. Um, it's just you know all the all the ancillary components if you like for whatever you like to call them everything on the passenger side is taken off uh, the next thing to do is to get the steering wheel to do that we need to get the um, top cowling off and the bottom cowling off again I've broken these in the past and this bottom cowling when I've put this back on in the past I've spent nearly two hours doing it and I nearly gave up and lost my rag but I did it in the end so you need a reasonably slim it's not this one I'm looking at the wrong screwdriver a reasonably slim um, Phillips screwdriver and it needs to go in at a certain angle it's sort of like that there's there's two is there two screws yeah there's two screws you can round off the screw quite easily you can damage the screw quite easily you just need to be patient one and, and, and do it by touch do it by feel when you feel you've got the into the head of the screw because you're going in at a strange angle if you can't do it you have to do what I did I put a head on climbed on the floor in the car with my head looking upwards and I could go in that way. Um, I can do it by feel now. It still takes me a little while to get it, but it is more difficult putting it back than it is to take it off. Once you've got the bottom piece off, um, you then have to feed the screwdriver up underneath because there are some screws that hold the top piece on that you have to unscrew from underneath, which is a right pain. Um, again, I've broken the top piece before because I've used brute force because I couldn't figure out how it came off, thinking it was just prizing off. And so I broke, this is like a piece of plastic bar that goes across where it screws into and I broke that so now I know I don't you know I don't use brute force so once those are both off uh, we then also need to take the clocks off 
this this piece of cowling comes off. There's a little little tiny little screw there, and then it's also held on by screws down at the bottom as well, which you, the cowlings, the bottom and top cowling needs to come off for you to access them. Again, they they're quite tricky because they're set right back. But the steering wheel gets in the way as well. Um, obviously, as I, as I mentioned earlier, under that rubber plug is the bolt. So they can be tricky. Until I take that one off, I don't know. But sometimes you get like a it's like a washer, but it's got sort of bent over tabs on it, and you have to remove those tabs. And the best way I've found to do it is get a screwdriver and a hammer and break them off. Or It's tough metal and it's difficult to bend them. Uh, again, reasonably time consuming, but without that you can't actually get to the bolt. Because the, uh, I suppose it's there for safety to stop the steering wheel falling off, but you know if you do a steering wheel up properly they won't fall off. Um, but I suppose it stops any movement of the steering wheel over time unscrewing that bolt but you need to get that bolt off while those tabs are over it you can't I've had some have got them some haven't and until you get until I get that rubber thing off I don't know which that is um, so anyway yeah next job uh, is going to be to remove the bottom cowling I just need to get the other screwdriver what, what I'll do once I've got it in the screw I'll show you I'll put the camera down there and show you the angle because believe me if you've never done it before it is a right pain back in a sec well, I haven't used the tiny screwdriver. Um, I've got the the one that I showed you just now. Uh, as you can see there, that is at a funny angle. So the screw, actually, no, it's not, is it? It's when you look at it, it's you feel like you're going in at an angle, but it's actually straight, which is quite weird. So that is straight, but it is over to sort of the left. The, if you like, the the screw hole is sort of at an angle like that, but the screwdriver goes in straight. So because the angle's like that, it, it may it may not look like that from how I'm filming it but trust me while I'm looking down at it and if you look at yours you'll see the screw hole both sides because it's round this one comes down to the left and that one goes down to the right but the screwdriver goes in straight so the screwdriver is actually going to the left of the hole and you just need to be really gentle with it until you feel it's locked in position it sounds stupid for undoing a the screw they're also done up quite tight as well I've already started this one but you need to put pressure on it because it is quite tight and if you don't put pressure upward pressure it'll slip off the screw and you'll be back to square one so keep pressure on it, gently undo it, and then have the same battle with the one on the other side. Sounds silly for a couple of screws, but trust me, if you've never done it before, you, when you do get to doing it, you'll realise what I'm talking about. So I'm going to get this off, and then I'll try and show you once I've got it off, I'll show you with the screws. Okay, that's off. I don't know if you can see. It's difficult to see. I mean, the, seat, the, the screw looks in the centre there, as I say, but because this is round you're coming up from an angle. It actually didn't take me very long to get these off. I've done it so many times and I've lost my rag, almost lost my rag, before. So that screws onto the underneath there, somewhere, if you can see it. Um, but now I've got this piece off. You can get to, I don't know if you can see, there's uh, no, I don't think you can see in there, there's a screw in there. You might be able to see it. Um, it's quite difficult to get to. That's to get this cowling off. You've got one screw at the top and the one at the bottom. It's easier if you release the steering and move it around. Um, it's difficult to film. I certainly can't do it one-handed, that's for sure. Oh, you can see that screw in there. There's a black-headed screw. You can see it. That's the one you need to get to. Someone's probably going to pop up on this video and say, Oh, no, you don't need to do that. You can do it this way. But I've never found another way of getting it out. So it's quite quite tricky but and quite, quite time-consuming. But it's got to be done. Right, there's that thing that I was talking about. So I'm going to try and bend them back. Because if you can bend them back, then you can bend them back for next time. So once you once you bend these uh, little tabs back, if you can, I say you're better off doing it with getting a screwdriver underneath each tab and bending it back with a hammer. Sometimes they snap off, sometimes they don't. Um, and then you can unscrew that. Without taking that off, you can't, which is a right pain. Um, so you do need to get it off or break it, one or the other. Um, I haven't done those two the, the two screws for the top of the uh, cowling yet because I've got my hands and knees with a head torch on and I can't see the damn things. I hate doing that bit. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the steering wheel off and the clock spring off uh, and then I'm hoping that you might, they might be a bit more visible. I've never done it that way around before so I thought I'd give it a bash and, uh, and see what it's like. So once I've got that off and the steering wheel off, I'll come back and we'll, go, we'll do the clock spring. If next time. Right, that's the clock spring. Uh, we need to unscrew that. There's a, there's a under here somewhere. There's a little uh, clip that you undo, um, and it tightens up on the steering column. 
Uh, we just need to get that off, and then we'll um, take this take this top piece off as well. Now we can see the screws there, so I'm glad I took the steering wheel off because now it's easy to get those off and see them even from underneath. So we'll take those take these two screws off. That will lift off, and then we can get to the rest of it. Okay, back in a minute. Okay, haven't taken the clock spring off yet, um, but I thought I'd do the speedo first. So I've taken the cowling off around the speedo use, um, with the three screws, which was using a very small uh, Torx screw, uh, and then I think using the same one, no, slightly bigger one, um, two there, one down there, and one there, and then there's just a multi plug on the back which pulls out easy, two minute, one minute job. Okay, there you have it. The um, clock springs off and the uh, that's the multi plug that was on the back of the speedo uh, and then the only thing we've got left now to take off is the knee airbag now that's just held on with two screws um, then that drops down uh, and again that's another one that the the airbag cable is very short uh, and it's uh, quite easy to break the plug I have broken plugs before Hopefully I won't do it this time, but uh, yeah, so there's your ignition barrel, obviously we don't have to touch that on this occasion, which is nice. So it is a bit of a palaver to get the steering wheel off, but now I've got that um, socket, it will make life a lot easier for the next time, because there will be a next time. So okay, so uh, yeah, I do have to, I think I have to undo that screw as well, because that needs to feed through there. Uh, so we'll get the airbag off, and then what all we need to do is start going and undoing all the bolts there's probably somewhere between eight and ten bolts including the two that I showed you earlier that are up the top there uh, and then it will just lift out he says right okay so that's the next stage we'll uh, get the airbag off and then we'll start undoing those screws okay there you go it's off so that was bolted to there with two screws which are there two torque screws one either side that then drops down and then you've got the cable there, which was plugged into there. So that actually came out reasonably easy, didn't break it. Uh, so obviously that can be discarded. Uh, and now we need to go around and undo all the bolts. So as I say, we've got one there. Um, those need to come out both sides, and there's one under there. You can just prise that out with one of the um, trim removing tools. Uh, obviously the same the other side. You've got that one down there. Uh, there's another one down there somewhere and the other side uh, and then I think that's pretty much it apart from the two at the top to do the top ones I use um, one of these what do you call it bendy bendy things because you've got to get around the windscreen uh, you've got to do it from it's easy if you do it from outside the car I'll show you when I get to that but um, they're easy to undo it's but you need something pliable that, that bendable that you can get the socket on the end of uh, anyway we'll come back to that in a minute but for the time being I'm going to start undoing all these bolts and then we can get it out Right, there you go, you saw it live. I'll show you what we got left. I've not, what I have noticed, I don't know if this is because this is a twin air, but there seems to be a lot more padding in various places. And all the different bits of trim have got more sound deadening around them. 
concluding this. This isn't on the other cars that I've done. So here we have it. This is the reason, if you'll need to change this heater box, why you have to get take the doors off. Because to get the door hinges off, you have to undo these bolts. Sorry, I'm not quite it. Let me unzoom the camera. These are the these bolts have to be undone, and all this metal work, I believe, has to come off because, of course, the heater box is encased within this. I really wouldn't want to be doing that. What a job and a half that is. Different if you're dismantling the car, but nightmare, I would imagine. So there you have it. That's it. There's the passenger rear bag. That's just held on by, I think it's one bolt plugged into the airbag system there. That's a two minute job to change that. So obviously you change that first, then put the new dash in. So we'll come back in a minute. That's been um, reconnected. What I'd normally do is now, now I can get to that connector plug, which can't before. I cut that little cable tie and then that will pull out a bit and then you can take that off properly and then put it back in afterwards rather than trying to do it the reverse of how I've just done it. So that just sits there, of course that can be taken off if you need to take it off for any reason. Uh, what else can I show you? That's it really. There's not an awful lot to it I suppose is there? So it was actually held on by one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's eight bolts yes I was right. The actual dash itself is held in by eight bolts. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to change the airbag and then we'll come back again. Just going back to the passenger airbag, I forgot to say there's actually two plugs on it either side. There's one that side and then there's another one that side under there. As you can see, the bag's been cut. So I've taken the bolt out, which is there. That's just sitting in there. And then I just need to disconnect the two wires and, uh, and take it out and put the new one in. Okay, the uh, new airbag, passenger airbag is in. As you can see, it's held in by one bolt there. You've got an electrical connection that side, an electrical connection that side, and down there, if you can see it, it just pushes in. There's two places where it pushes in. So that's all screwed in now. Uh, and so now it's time to get the new dash out and put it in position. And then while you put it in position, you've got to make sure you thread all, all the cables through in the, uh, in the correct place. There's your stereo cables. Uh, that's the cable for the um, the controls on the on the coloured bit of dash, uh, city steering and so on, hazard lights. That's the control cable for that. Uh, yeah, that's it. So we've got to get that. That's obviously you one for your speedometer. Uh, I think that's about it that comes through. All the others are obviously around the steering wheel. So we'll get the dash out of the garage and uh, get that in position. There you go, dash is back in, wires are all fed through. I've done the screws up in there to hold that in. I've forgotten which screws go in there now. So I need to refer back to my video because I've completely forgotten what ones they are. And I'm just putting the clock in, just got the first screw in. So again, that just um, slots in. It's really a, obviously a reverse of taking out, but uh, it doesn't really matter so much which order you put them back in. As long as it all goes back, all the bolts are into the actual dash itself. So it's all nice and secure. Making sure to use the um, the washers and the rubber washers to stop any rattling in the right order as well. And uh, all going swimmingly so far. Okay, I've got the uh, the cowling back in and the top cowling and the steering wheel. And I've just learned something. I found an old steering wheel nut. And the old steering wheel nut was, if you can see that, I've still got the tabs on it. And what I've just discovered is that tabbed, it's, it's, I suppose you could call it a washer, which is like under, right at the very back, and then you've got the two separate nuts which are held together by that. Um, using that as it is, you can actually get a 24mm socket on it. And so I've done that instead. So I've fed the wires through. Um, I look, I've obviously, I've learned about that now for when I take the next steering wheel off. I use an ordinary standard 24mm socket rather than uh, breaking the tabs off, which is much preferable. So, okay, anyway, going back to the uh, so steering wheel's back on, the wires have been fed through, plugged back in there. So, you've got your two airbag wires if you've got a dual stage airbag. If you've only got a single stage airbag, you'll only have the one cable, 
uh, and then you've got the I think that's the steering wheel controls or possibly the horn controls on there um, when you put the, the clock spring back on which I, sh I didn't film I should have done so you have to make sure that that piece is at the top because that, that piece that connection there is at the top obviously feeds through the hole if that's not in the right place then you can't get the steering wheel back on um, okay so on to the next bit okay next to go back on was first of all uh, the bottom piece of the uh, centre console uh, followed by the top piece and then the um, gator just snaps back on again. I haven't put the mirror controls, uh, the window controls back in yet, um, but that will go in next. Okay, so centre console's now back in. I've done the bolts up loosely at the front because you have to allow for a bit of movement backwards and forwards when you get the side panel on. So I've got to put the now got the side panel. Uh, sorry, now I've got to put the middle panel on and the top around the around the gear stick.